everyone. It is Wednesday, September 15th, and today we're going to talk about drafting, and we're going to draft a very simple block, but it, hopefully it gives you the chops to be able to do other things. I cannot believe I didn't turn off my <laughs> notification that I'm getting mail. Hey, everybody. Okay, so let on Monday, Today's Wednesday. I just said that. On Tuesday, I went and got my booster. No, on Monday, I went and got my booster after my live. And the pharmacist said, you probably will have the same reaction that you did after your second shot. Right on the money. Right exactly on the money. I woke up uh, yesterday. My arm was just crazy sore, but that doesn't bother me. And and by 11 o'clock, I was taking a nap. <laughs> I sat asleep. And, and then basically, I, I uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. I did 200 steps. <laughs> 200 steps, no, 500 steps. And so here was my nest yesterday. And the funny thing is I had just ordered that book from Joanne Sharp. And it came... Uh, John took it out of the box, but I didn't even open it. I, I couldn't, I couldn't even open it. It was like, okay, whatever. I'll deal with it tomorrow. Um, yeah, this is what it is. I'm very excited. It's an older publication of hers, but it's the art of whimsical stitching. In a sense, that's kind of what I'm doing with Sue Spargo, but I just love the way Joanne looks at art. So this is a good thing for my library. The other, oh, the other thing was today, according to what happened last time, I am fine. Well, this morning I'm washing my hair, getting ready for you guys, and I couldn't even get through drying my hair. I mean, I did it, but I'm like, oh, I'm not okay. And I went and took my temperature, and yeah, it's still up a little bit, but man, I am way better than yesterday. <laughs> way better. But I'm so glad that I got it, especially... If I'm going to be going to Houston. Okay, so Pam, thank you, thank you, thank you for sending me this picture because I think this is, I think a lot of us are going to agree with what you went through emotionally. <laughs> I'm making it sound bigger than it is, but it is emotional. So Pam just finished our Becky Goldsmith BOM and I think it was 2019, I think you said, I, I get them all mixed up, but I mean, it's spectacular. And again, a BOM is a perk of being a star member. And she finished it in the year in the timely fashion of which it was presented. But then what happened was her husband got her uh, the Q20, the Bernina Q20 sit down, all right? And she, she was... You know, she didn't want to goof up that quilt. And so she practiced and practiced and practiced. And then she touched the, the quilt top. And I'll show you that in a moment. But I know exactly what you're saying, Pam. Exactly. Because that's what happened to me with my Cindy Needham quilt. Was I was working. I'm looking to see if it's... I can't grab it. Um, I was working on my 765. And I thought, no, you know, because these long arms, even though it's a sit down, they sound really different. But I thought, this is ridiculous. Go sit your rear end down and work at it. And I, and, and it's because Cindy's stuff is so small and minute. And so then I thought of all the people that have won ribbons, like at Houston and Paducah, and they are working on long arms or a big sit down. So I went over to work on it, and it was like, the angels started singing. Probably how Broadway felt last night. The angels have sung. We're back open. So um, I, I, congratulations for understanding your limitations and your fear. But Pam, wait till you guys see her. Wait till you see her quilting, baby. You got chops. You have got chops. That's absolutely beautiful. So. There we go. Hey, Roberta. So, um, so here we are. Okay, we are going to talk about drafting. And I hate that word. I hate that word. But what you really, you know, we have all these 
fabulous publications like the 110 block tool book that I love so much. But there are only a zillion patterns out there that don't have, well, this is the size you cut the pieces, etc. So take, for example, here is, oh, that's all blurry. Here, um, you know, I culled a lot of my books. Come on, baby. You can do better than that, or we are sunk. Isn't that weird that it's not coming in? I may need my technical guy here. There we go. So I have, um, I culled a lot of my books, but not books like this. Okay, so this is an older uh, publication, but I look at this book and I, I, I will go through and I have this marked. I don't know why. That means there was something on this page that intrigued me. Okay, but there's no cutting instructions, right? But then, I, oh, let's see what I have earmarked over here. Um, oh, this is when I was in my basket mode. So in this book, there are 5,500 Okay, in Barbara Brackman's new book, I've got a bunch of stuff stacked here. I have no, there are so many in here, it's ridiculous. Uh, 4,000, 4,000, okay, 4,000 books. And I, um, and I like how this new book is laid out, okay. In the olden days, what really helped me wrap my brain around this whole drafting thing because again, there were not the publications, is this first book of mine by Ginny Beyer. And, um, oh, I love her. She's my hero. And what she did with this book, and this was published in, <laughs> okay, this hardback, 1695, so that tells you, right? I wonder when this thing was published. 1980. And isn't that great that it has stood the test of time? So, so what she provided in this book was brilliant. She provided these overlays, all right? So it says up here that this is a four-patch design, but if I don't have that there, I could, well, there we go. There's four patch. There's a four-patch. There's a 16 square. No, no. So what you basically do is you look at the block like this one, and we're going to do it in a moment, and then decide, okay, how does this break down into pieces? And you can see right here how this breaks down into pieces. That's it. If I were going to draw this, I would come up with a size that's compatible that can be divided into four and or two, because that looks pretty darn compatible to me also. In fact, I would probably do it this way. So if I were gonna piece this block, is I would piece it as two inches. I could do three inches because one and a half and one and a half equals three. I could do four inches because this would be two and this would be two. I could do six inches because this is three, this is three equals six, seven inches tough. And so you, you, you gotta look at the block and then determine what you want to draw it in, all right? And another sales pitch for why you need block, uh, books like this in your life, uh, here's my old encyclopedia of piece patterns by Barbara. And in fact, I had the original one that was actually a binder, if you can believe it. But I just, pick, I just grabbed this to show you, and I opened it up. This page was dove, dovetailed, and see this block here? I want to show you something. I would never in a million trillion years have thought of making that block, but I saw it in the book and there you, I saw it in this book and it ended up in my paper piecing book that a lot of you guys are getting. And you can see here, actually I don't remember. Okay, this is seven and a half, which makes this half of that. So, um, if I were starting from scratch, I'd probably do eight and I'd probably do four and I would make my paper piecing pattern. So you you don't, it's, it's a matter of drawing lines, connecting the dots and so forth. Let me talk about the paper that you need. 
you need a graph paper. And in the olden days, they would sell these by the sheet at the quilt store. And I said, well, that's crazy because I, I at, in the olden days, I was doing tons of drafting. So I have a, lar a large um, uh, pad of it as well as a smaller pad of it. But what's really important when you get this is you want it to have eight to an inch, eight to an inch. And if you think about it, that's what we're doing. We're doing one eighth, one quarter. Okay, here we go. Let me go on this piece of paper over here. If we have, let me get my hand in here. Here we have our one inch block. Okay, and then here we have, now we're gonna divide it in half. So that's our half inch, right? And then here's our quarter inch, which is what we piece with. And then yet there's our eighth inch. And so that's how you get into things like, cut this square at two and seven eighths, and then cut it on the corner diagonally. So it's all based on this. Now, there are times when it won't fit into this grid, and that's when you get into making templates out of your template plastic and, and doing it the way old fashioned way we did it old fashioned. But but if you know if you're working with primary shapes like uh, squares, half square triangles, quarter square triangles and you keep within this grid, then you will just have to in, um, do the magic numbers. You can always add the quarter inch seam allowance and cut a template, but, but when I started, there was none of this rotary cutting stuff, okay? None of it. It was all make your darn template. So we had to learn how to do this, all right? Now, when I sit, I'm gonna use um, this friction pin. In real life, I would be using a uh, really sharp pencil, all right? The other thing is when I'm, I'm gonna say drawing because it's less scary. Uh, this is a ruler from my college days. I had to take drafting when we weren't working with computer programs. I mean, we literally sat down and drew whatever the heck it was. And so maybe that's why my fear of drawing quilt blocks is just not non-existent, all right? You can use rulers like this, your rotary cutting ruler, but if you really want to get it exact, you want to use something like this. Your quilt shop might have it or might not have it. I don't know. But certainly Michael's and art supplies and stuff like that will have it. So what I did was I chose a block. I went through here. I chose a block that I thought would be fun to draw. I chose this block. And the reason I chose this block is because it has um, half square triangles right here. It has, and right here, quarter square triangles. And then this one's up for grabs. But let's draw it, okay? I can see here, just from like I showed you at the Jenny Buyer, this is basically a four patch. I can look at that and I can see it. In the, in the olden days, if I got into things that were really complex like this, I would literally put my ruler on it and see what we're into. So for grins, what's this? I wasn't planning on doing this. This thing isn't even in inches. I wonder where my inch one is. Well, there's that. There's that. No, nope, it's off a little bit. Okay. So this almost looked like it was a... Uh, eight patch, but it's not. So, okay, but that's, you have to look at it and determine what the heck you're looking at, okay? So let me go back to this one here, which is called, unnamed, <laughs> Farm and Fireside in 1904. So let's talk about, again, the sizes I might wanna make this. Do I wanna make it two inches total? If I do, that means this is one, this component is one, and this component is one. And we always talk in finished size. We do not talk in cutting size. That's too small for me. So let's make it four inches. So that makes this to be two, 
this means to be two. That's doable, but I think I'm most comfortable with six right now. So that this unit would be three, this unit would be three inches, et cetera, et cetera. Three, 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 three. So the first, I'm gonna put this book over here so I make sure I draw the right thing. The first thing I'm gonna do, if I've decided to do a six inch block, and again, I would be using a pencil here. What's going on? Okay, I am going to, I am going to draw a six inch block. And I'm gonna start at one of the main intersections and I'm gonna come over one, two, three, four, five, six and make another little dot. And I'm gonna draw that line, okay? And, and if you're gonna to have to make a template because it's a real weird shape, you want to be spot on, all right? None of this close enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh boy, that doesn't look right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe that one's not right. Maybe my top one's not right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, we're good. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw this. And I'm going to draw this. There. There's my finished block size. Ready to go. So the next thing I do is I'm going to draw this line right here. I'm going to do my little cross cross. All right. So let's do that. So I would come over three. Where's my other ruler? I am going to do rotary uh, cutting on this so it doesn't have to be exact. But if you are, gonna, again, going to make a template, you want it to be exact. So now I've got the four patch. Now I need to do an X in it. Now when I do an X in it, I am going to be going exactly corner to corner, and I'm going to be hitting the corners in all these blocks. If you're not hitting the corners in all those blocks, you've drawn something wrong. So there's that. What's the matter, John? Mm. John said it's slightly off screen. Let me pull this over. There we go. We're good. Okay, so now I'm going to go here. Thanks, John. And the crowd said, thank you, John. All right, so let's look at what we've got going on here. Here's this. All right. So now we have to get these little guys in, these little lines. Well, I can see that these, where my little friction pen go? These little lines, I would draw in my book, people. Now, I can get rid of this because with um, uh, heat because it is a friction pin. But I see, really, that what's going on is there's a little X in each of the little corner boxes. So, let's do that. Okay, so I am going to put this straight up here. But I am just going to draw right here. And the truth of it is, I could stop now, and this gives me all the information I need to do this block. But let's just keep going, okay? So I'm looking at the picture, make sure I'm getting it right. This is dark. This is dark. Um, then this one's going to go here. And this is really drafting 101. Um, I think I mentioned one time that I was, oh, I did that one wrong. Where's my trusty iron? Oh, I bet I can erase it. Oh, that's why it's called an erasable pen. <laughs> it should be up here. Um, somebody got hold of me back in the day and wanted to know how to do a how to do a nine patch in a different size, and I almost got ill. I almost got ill. Okay, so let's do a check here. Okay. This one. Okay, yay. So now, let's take a look at the components of this block. You've got two things going on. You've got half square triangles, Make sure I'm for the frame. Um, there we go. This is a half square triangle. Okay, same thing. 
I want this to be a half square triangle because I want this on the straight of grain. Here's your 90. I always want the outside of the block on a straight of grain. When you're doing a half square triangle, you take the finished measurement, we happen to know it's three here, right? And you add seven eighths. So I would cut this at three and seven eighths and then cut it corner to corner. All right, I would do that two times. And then I've got one, two, three, four, okay? But now let's talk about this here. This is a quarter square triangle, and it's called that because you take the measurement and you cut it. Oh, I'm on two pieces of paper. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Corner to corner. Look, it's got a 90 degree, just like this guy, but the difference is this is on the straight of grain. So out here, Okay, let's do this for straight of grain up here. So out here, the straight of grain is here, okay? So I take this finished measurement, which is uh, three inches, and I um, take, let me, make a, uh, let me see. Okay, there we go. So this is um, three inches right here and I add X plus one and a quarter equals four and a quarter, and then I cut it corner to corner, and then I've got these. And I only have to do it once. One, one, one. Now this guy's a wild card in here because all I really am concerned is that the outside of this whole thing is on the straight of grain. That's what I care. So this could be cut a quarter square triangle, or this could be cut a half square triangle. Choice is yours. Because if I cut it grain, but this will be on the bias. I mean, you can throw the coin up and have it land one way or another, and you're fine. So I, you look at the, what job do you want, baby? One and a quarter. My accountant. <laughs> My bookkeeper. <laughs> By the way, I still have a fever this morning, so you got to cut me some slack here. <laughs> Good grief. And I'll bet one of you found it. So, okay, so in the olden days, when we didn't have rotary um, rulers and we had to use templates, this is what we had to do, okay? I want you to have an appreciation of where we come from. We would take, say, let's take this, all right? And then you would add a quarter inch around it just by going like this. I know I'm getting a lot of lines on here. But I think if you understand the basics, you can kind of figure this stuff out there. And remember, when you use the rotary numbers, it's always using a quarter inch seam. And just by doing it in a different size does not, why well, that does not look right. That looks too fat to me. And it is. Okay. Then what we would do is we would put this on top, this clear uh, paper. You should have some of this in your stash always too. And we would take our Sharpie felt tip pen. That one still looks big to me. I'll tell you, it does, it does, it does, which makes me concerned about this graph paper, if you want to get right down to it. Like this. Come on, where are you? There you are. Like this. You would cut this out, and then you would use it as your template. All right, so obviously we're not going to do it for something like this. So when would we cut a template? Let's talk about that. Let's just flip through the book here. There are going to be times when, like this, I think you're going to have to cut a template. Um, on this, you're going to have to cut a template. Maybe not. 
uh, on this one, I think you're going to have to cut a template. And so the truth of it is, if you want to know, is I steer clear of blocks like that. This, you're going to have to cut a template. But that's okay if you just really want to do, say, this block, okay? Um, this one. I mean, I really want to do this block. It's called Leafy Basket. I really don't want to do this block, but but I really want to do this block. Yep, folks, templates. And it's simply a matter of looking at this and then dividing it into sections. Now, the first clue in this one is you've got to figure out what this is. What this is. And um, I don't... Well, let me measure this. This is interesting. And this I didn't practice this, you guys. I just... Okay, so that is a little bit over, let me mark my ruler, right here is that. Okay, how I would do this block is this. I would go one, two, three, four, five. Even though it is looks like it's a little off, I would make this into a 25 patch or 5 patch, and then I would start dividing the whole thing up. So you just have to put your eyes on, and it's, it's, it's that one, is, the one I just showed you is a little bit of a mind bender. I mean, it really, truly is. But if you understand the basics on how to do this, then you, you're free. I mean, there are patterns everywhere. You're completely free. So let me see. Oh, okay. Thank you, Karen. The Quilt Show has a really nice free show with Sally Collins and it's making templates. It's also precision paper piecing. Yes, she is amazing. I just gave you the kindergarten version, not the, um, not the high school or college version. So I thank you. Linda, it is not difficult. Start with a four patch that is four inches and make it what made a, a pinwheel, a pinwheel, right? And, and then make it bigger. It's not difficult. It's just lines. It's just connecting the dots. You know, I, I wouldn't even do that one. I mean, I'm smart enough to look at that one that I just did. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. You got to be kidding me. But like when it got to my book and I wanted to do that Japanese lantern thing, um, the lanterns, Chinese lanterns, I mean, there it was, and it wasn't that hard to break apart. Remember when it's in like the Barbara Brackman book or the other books um, that have these things, uh, these different ideas in it, it's a suggestion. I mean, you are the captain of the ship and you can go from there. So let's see, let me go back. Oh, by the way, Nancy, thank you for me feeling better. I actually took a... Um, I actually took something this morning, so hopefully I'll be better. My goal is to be able to um, hand stitch. So that's it in a nutshell. Please watch the Sally Collins show, please. I think she's the one that has gone into depth of this more than any guest we've ever had. And thank you, Karen, for bringing that up. I really appreciate it. Um, so today I hope to feel okay and do a little hand stitching. On Friday... Oh, I'm even sold out on my site, but guess what, people? We are not sold out of PDFs. That's unlimited. So you can go to thequiltshow.com, and you can get the PDF of it. I know we're getting some hard copies in, but you'll be fine with the PDF, all right? And on Friday, I'm going to give you the big politician speech on, no, not really, blah, on, no, why? Why do you even care about foundation paper piecing? Because I sure didn't at all. Because I had, like that block, I just said, I'm never going to make it. There were too many pieces. When foundation paper piecing took off, there were like these quilts. There were like these flowers of 10,000 pieces in it. And I'm like, going, oh, why would I want to do that? But there are some basics with it that you need to know. And just like learning how to um, draft or draw your own block, as Betsy says, it will free you to be able to do more patterns that maybe you wouldn't even attempt. All right. So I am going on Friday to show you some why, you know, 
If you, again, need the book, and you, if you're going to do it, you need the book, um, go get the PDF at thequiltshow.com. And can you bring it closer? The number of inches. Oh, Linda. Linda, can you lip read? Because I remember you. I remember you, Linda. Okay. Let me see. There we go. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out on this so that uh, people have the magic numbers. I'm going to write this down for half square is plus seven eighths. And then this is plus one and a quarter. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, I will see you Friday and um, I will try and do more than get 500 steps in. Just saying. Okay. Yes, Linda, you may save. Uh, yeah. Uh, what you're going to do, because I'm going out on this, is you're going to just take a little snap of it and there you go. And this particular lesson is always available here. Always. And if we need to do more on it, we can. This was just like 101. Okay. Have a good one.